Today on Running to Him, God uses ordinary people to show extraordinary wisdom. Well, if you're joining us in going through the Pauline letters, today's reading is 1 Corinthians 1, and we'll concentrate on verses 26 through 29. Well, 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29 says this, For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong, and the base things of the world and the despised God has chosen, the things that are not, so that he may nullify the things that are so that no man may boast before God. Now, let me be clear from the get-go. I am not wise by any stretch of the imagination. I certainly did not exhibit my wisdom in my youth. I have been clearly chosen by God to say what is on my heart. My school-age days were um, fraught with many failures. I think the fourth grade was when the trouble began because that's the first time I remember that my mother had a meeting with the teacher about my work. I didn't get any better when I went to junior high, that's the seventh and eighth grade. And while I don't remember anyone talking to uh, behind my back and my being uh, held back, they must have certainly been thinking about it. My high school days were even worse and I was socially promoted from high school because the principal, Mr. Gridley, quote, didn't want to ever see me again, unquote. Now, I did manage to get thrown out of a junior college because of my skill in not attending, but that changed after I was drafted and found a relationship with Christ. However, my past did stay with me because when I applied to attend Dallas Bible College, um, they had to send a, my application to the admissions committee. And that admissions committee discussed my application, and then they drafted a letter to the director of admissions saying in part, well, Blanchard has had a hard time in life, and we believe that you should admit him provisionally because everybody deserves a second chance, but he won't last two weeks. Well, I didn't know the content of the letter until five years later when I became the director of admissions at Dallas Bible College. I had received a bachelor degree and I was working on my master's degree at the time. So why was I successful at Dallas Bible College and not at any other school? Well, the simple answer to that is that I couldn't just buy into the wisdom that they were teaching at secular schools and wasn't smart enough just to put my head down, give the answers that they wanted, and move on. God had put me in a college that taught his wisdom, along with other secular subjects, so that I might grow in him. I still struggle with some of the concepts which pass for wisdom in today's secular world. I struggle with someone who says, I believe in freedom of speech, but... Uh, If I don't like what you say or feel mentally uh, threatened by what you're saying, I'm going to shut you up physically. This wisdom seems very far from being wise. In Malachi 3.10, God says to test him to see if he will provide. In Psalm 111.10, he says to us, the fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Now, when I found Christ and began to study God through His Word and His action, I gained some wisdom. I'm still working on becoming wise, but I am no longer just plain dumb. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. If you listen to us on Facebook or YouTube, Please like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. You can always email us at PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.